ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल सो इन दि कंप्यूटर एंड क्रिप्टोग्रफी एंड नेटवर्क सिक्यूरिटी लेक्चर सीरीज दट द टापिक दट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज अबउट डिजिटल सिग्नेचर फ्रॉम द इनर कोर्स बिफोर दैट आई इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ आई एम लोकेश वी फ्रॉम आर एम डी इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज वर्किंग एस एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन सीनियर सी टी पर्सन लेट्स वी मूव ऑन टू द सेशन सो इन दि अर्लियर सीरीज इट सेल्फ वी डिस्कस्ड अबउट Uh, earlier discussed we discussed about the, the authentication functions we have the different types of authentication functions are there one is the encryption and then message authentication code and then second and third one is the um, mac okay so like hash function mac and then uh, encryption so digital in digital signature is also just like kind of mac just like a message authentication code it provides the authentication is an used to counter the source repetition that is denial of transmission of the message the, the source couldn't able to deny that this message is not uh, sent by them so that is to be the repetition so it provides the message authentication so in this is digital signature so next we discuss about um, Uh, digital signature property. So we discussed what is digital signature. So what are the if we are creating a digital signature, signature, it should satisfy three properties. The first property is that it should able to verify the author and the date and time of the signature, and then it should able to should have the capability to authenticate the contents and the time of the signature. The signature must be very verifiable by the third parties also. so likewise you have to create your digital signature so this is the format so it should satisfy a digital signature should satisfy these three properties so next we go with the requirements like a digital signature must we actually generally a digital signature is not a signature just like a bit pattern that depends upon the message that being signed and must be use some information which is unique to the sender to prevent the forgery and denial of service and it should be easy, relatively easy to produce and easy to recognize and verify and it is infeasible to forge like either uh, like it should not be forged by same signature should not be forged by somebody else and must be practical to retain a copy of the digital signature in storage and then uh, we have uh, three different types of signatures are there one is direct indirect and arbitrated one is first one is direct signature here the person who are all involving is sender and the receiver the assume that receiver as sender's public key digital signature made by the sender signing entire message or hash with the private key can encrypt with the receiver's public key important that that the first uh, then encrypt the message and sign over there so the security here the security depends upon the sender's private key so in the direct sim by in the direct signature itself we have some problem like validity of the schemes depends upon the security of the sender's private key sender may deny the sending particular message and by claiming the private key was stolen lost or stolen and someone else forged in the signature so these are all the main drawbacks that's why we move on to the arbitrated signature here we are using some third party trusted third party this trusted third party is going to authenticate the sender and then here involves a use of an arbiter a and validates an any signed message then dated and sent to the recipient it requires some suitable level of trust so the arbiter should be very a trust trustworthy one can be implemented either using the public key or a private key algorithms arbiter may may or may not see the message so there is an arbiter between the communicating parties so if for each and every signed um, it should go to the arbiter and then uh, it, it we can send that message like every signed message from the sender x to the receiver y goes to the first arbiter a a verifies the message and signature by performing the number of testers and the message is dated and sent to the y with an indication that it is has been verified with the satisfaction of the arbiter the presence of a solve the problems which are there in the digital directed digital signature so here we are using elgama digital signature method so these are all the criterias 
for the Elgamo digital signature which will use first if, the, if we want to create a digital signature I will be choosing if uh, if I uh, assume that if I am the user A I will be choosing any large prime number Q which would be a primitive root of alpha so these primitive roots and all we have studied in the uh, second unit itself like a basic mathematics and cryptography and then we have to choose some secret key A such that it should be this should be of X of A should be of uh, within this length and we from this X of A we can calculate Y of A Y of A is equal to alpha to the power of X of A and mod Q afterwards we have to select one random number so K with the K should satisfy this property and then we have to compute S1 and S2 S1 is equal to A power, alpha power K mod Q S2 is equal to K inverse M, um, M minus XA S1 mod Q minus 1. So likewise user B will also uh, <coughs> will also uh, create their signature, download the user's public key Q alpha and YA and then here we have two different things signing and verifying. V1 is equal to alpha to the power of M mod Q and V2 is equal to YA S1 s1 power s2 mod q if v1 and v2 is same now it implies that uh, the signing signed message is an original one and then uh, you can use another method called as uh, you can use another method called as corner for key setup this is an another method so here you have to choose uh, say two prime numbers and we have to find out a power p q is equal to one mod p a p q are the global parameters and then each user A generates a key for a secret key should be of length 0 to Q and then we have to calculate the public key V is equal to A power minus A mod Q and then with that we have to create the signature generation and finally we have to verify that signature okay so this is next one is a digital signature standard which one is the acceptable one by the governments is a standard is also DSA is the algorithm so DSA uh, is a public key technique which uses secure hash algorithm to that message to produce a message digest here users private key is applied to that message digest DSA to generate a digital a variant of Elgama or corner schemes will be used here so here you can see these are all the approaches one is the RSA approach, second one is a DSS approach. RSA approach is very very simple one, but in DSA approach, we have a signing part as well as the verifying part. So you can see in the RSA approach, the message is hashed here and then we have encrypted with the help of the private key and then appended here and then both the messages are appended with the original message and the receiver side we will do the reverse process in order to uh, confirm whether it is correct or not so in DSS approach we will be having signing part and then we will be having a uh, verification part so first I will do the hashing and then I'll go for the signature in order to do signature I need some global elements k u g and then k or suffix a and I need a secret key k both of things are the used to generate a signature and it's appended over the message and then I will append it over here and then once again I will do the hash function and then I will verifying it. So this, in this way I will do the verification. So these are all the functions to find out S and X and then W, V and then uh, W and V. So these are all the functions are required for signing and the verification part. So these are all the main things how to find out all those. Sorry. These are the main things how to find out the values. Thank you students.